How to identify the South Korean K-21 Infantry Fighting Vehicle or IFV. The development of the K-21 began in the late 1990s and early 2000s. However, it entered service in around about 2009. This vehicle is significantly larger than its Western, other Western counterparts such as the American Bradley or the British Warrior. Is it, it is interesting to note that this vehicle here is also fully amphibious and when it comes to amphibious operations it actually has a couple of large cylindrical rubber pontoons that pop out from the side and they can be inflated and then this vehicle can cross rivers and lakes and it uses its tracks while in the water for propulsion. And now let's look at the specifications of the K21 IFV. Weight around 25.6 tons, length 6.9 meters and 23 feet with 3.4 meters or 11 feet, height 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet, a crew of 3 and up to 9 passengers or 40 equipped troops. Main armament and consists of a K40 40mm auto cannon. Secondary armament is a 7.62mm machine gun. Operational range 500Ks with over 300 miles, speed 70Ks or 43 miles an hour. And now let's look at the identifying features of this vehicle. Here we can see the hull front is steeply angled. Note the rectangular splashboard on the front of the lower glacis plate and you can see that in that long red oval. The upper glacis plate is sloped up towards the turret and you can see there in the yellow oval there. The sides of the hull are flat. The front part of the hull is angled forward to follow the slope of the upper and lower glacis plates at the front of the vehicle. And you can make that out there inside that yellow circle. It's a little bit dark but if you look carefully you'll notice how it angles. At the rear of the hull, the sides at the rear of the vehicle angle upwards slightly at the rear and you can see that there in the red oval there. And if you can't make out that in this photo here, you'll certainly make it out in some of the later photos in this episode. The driver position is at the left front of the vehicle, just in front of the turret, and you can see that there in this yellow circle. We have an engine access hatch on the front of the upper glacis plate, and you can see that inside that red oval. This vehicle has six pairs of road wheels. In this picture, the trucks are partially covered by the side skirts of the vehicle. Now, I'm going to admit here, I do not know how many return rollers there are with this vehicle, although there are so many other identifying features, it's not one, the return rollers are not one I'd use when it comes to recognizing this vehicle. It has so many other identifying features that really make it stand out and make it look unique compared with other infantry fighting vehicles or armored vehicles in general. The K21 has a troop ramp at the rear of the vehicle. The ramp slash door is open and dropped in this photo. We can also see in this photo a flotation device. Now don't expect to see these too often, of course, unless they are deployed for amphibious operations. And the top outer sides of the hull slope outwards slightly. And you can see that there inside that red oval. And the rear of the vehicle angles outwards slightly. You can just kind of make that out in this photo. It might be a little hard to see. But when you look at the rear of this vehicle, especially from the side profile, you'll notice how the, the rear of it angles out slightly. Looking at the turret, the front of the turret is flat in, a, in appearance and can be slightly different depending on the model of the vehicle. However, around the main gun, the turret is sloped and appears to be wider at the top and narrower at the base, as you can see here. And the turret houses a 40mm cannon as the main gun that is considerably bigger than either the Warrior of the British or the American Bradley. And this vehicle has a two-man turret. We have the commander on the left and the gunner on the right, as you can see in those two ovals. And here we can see that the sides and rear of the turret are flat, as you can see in the respective ovals there on the front and back. And so I think this is an interesting photo as it shows quite a few differences between the American Bradley 
in the South Korean K21, especially in size. And, and as I say here, the size comparison between the K21 IFV and US Army Bradley IFV is extremely noticeable. Also, if you look at the upper glacier's plate on the Bradley, it is considerably steeper than that of the South Korean K21. There are also other differences, such as on the size of the vehicles, the size of the guns, and of course those, those different turrets, uh, excuse me, those different turrets as well. Anyway, let's carry on. And as usual, thanks all for watching. Go ahead and like, dislike, share and subscribe. Go ahead, you have nothing to lose, no need to be embarrassed, you don't have to tell anybody. Remember, I welcome your comments, so comment away and if you have suggestions or notice I made a mistake, then please go ahead and bring them to my attention. Your suggestions help me to improve. Alright, take care everybody. Until next time.